Aloha everybody, welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today we're traveling to Hawaii in celebration of 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's where we had our best vacation ever, so we're excited to be back. Come with us as we travel back to the island of Oahu. We try the best manapua on the island. We make our way to Disney's Alani and eat dinner at Ama Ama. Ama Ama just reopened. Is it worth $125 per person? We're gonna find out. How about you come with us on this adventure? Everybody, it's 7 a.m. and we're on our way to Hawaii. Let's go. We have a six hour flight, so we decided to grab a quick breakfast at Lemonade. And this is what the farmers Ooh, skillet. That looks good. Does it? Looks like a quiche or something. I just got an everything bagel. I get weird like flight anxiety and like I don't like to eat a lot before we fly. But I thought I should eat something since it's a long flight. And then we'll go crazy once we get there. <laughs> You're still flying Delta. We don't usually have one of these. Okay, check this out. Put your phone right there. You can watch Ordinary Adventures on the way to Hawaii. We're going, going, back, back to Oahu. Oahu. Is that a song? We're going, going, back. I got embarrassed because there was like a bunch of people waiting to sit in their seats. Is, there a, is that a song? Yeah. Like I'm going back, back to Oahu. You think singing it at third time would make me recognize the song? I'm going, going back, back to Cali, Cali. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Captain Fane Smith. Uh, we have my first number is Stanley Chung on your four Los Angeles based flights. It's a back flight to work aboard flight 31 now bound for Honolulu. Closed up the main cargo door, we closed the cabin door, through went in for an on-time departure to Honolulu, looking at five hours and 18 minutes. Honolulu, or wherever your final destination may be, mahalo. A lot of people ask what aloha is. Well, getting off the plane, apparently liquid aloha is beer. I love this airport. It's the best. It's the best. Look at this. The menahune are hard at work. They escaped from Milani and then they started working out and they came to the airport? They're all around Hawaii. I know, just joking. Just already found some souvenirs. I want to get Peter into a Hawaiian shirt this time. I want to get myself like a cute little Hawaiian sort of dress and have a Hawaiian shirt and go full tourist. So right now, my, my Simpsons merch ain't cutting it here in Hawaii. You could get one where Santa is riding a dolphin. It's gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. It is. Okay, this is much more my speed. A tie-dye sweatshirt. It says North Shore, which is my favorite part of Oahu. So we just landed, and of course we're starting the Hawaii food tour off right with the Hawaii native spot you've never heard of. It's called Star Starbucks. And I'm gonna get the pumpkin cream cold brew. <laughs> you guys, we're gonna eat so much food on this trip. I'm freaking pumped. Now, if only they had something unique to Hawaii, like a spam breakfast sandwich or a pineapple latte. They do have some exclusive been there series mugs. Here's one for Waikiki Beach. And this one's for the state of Hawaii. They do have a special Hawaii collection version of the Starbucks tumbler that looks like a pineapple. So right in the airport they have the PATA Gallery of Legends. And look who's on the wall but Mr. Walt Disney. We've made it to Hawaii. We have. I can see that the lens is already starting to fog up because it's a little bit humid here. I'm so excited to be back. I've been dreaming of the day. We're finally back. Now all I need to do is convince you to move here. You have your choice of either moving here or buying a Hawaiian shirt. One of the two. 
sure the food will convince you to move here. <laughs> okay. Hey, I like that answer. How cute is this? I feel like this is a huge upgrade to when we came last time. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I only paid like $30 a day. The guy gave me a free upgrade. They were like trying to sell me on a convertible. They're like, are you sure you don't want a convertible or like a Jeep? I'm like, no, we're good. We're not cool enough for a convertible. <laughs> Next time. Next time. Always take photos of your rental car. Yeah, pro tip. Always take lots of photos and video because they don't, you don't want them to charge you extra. Another pro tip is if you come to Hawaii, rent a car, you're not going to want to stay at Alani the whole time. You're going to want to explore the island. If you're stuck at Waikiki, you're going to hate yourself. There's so much around the island and you might have to pay for parking every day, but you're going to want to do it. Before we go to Alani, we have a couple stops to make. Our flight was six hours. We're a little hungry, so we're going to make a stop in Waipahu for Honolulu Kitchen, which we've heard is incredible. This is a family-owned restaurant specializing in Manapua. From what I understand, Manapua is a Polynesian version of the Charisu Bao. Manapua in Hawaiian means delicious pork fat. I'm down. They have 31 variations of the Manapua. They have steamed, deep fried, and sweet, but they're most known for the deep fried. We got a huge selection to try. This place also serves plate lunches and dim sum. They'll put it onto your plate, almost like Panda Express style. This is like a family-owned Hawaiian Panda Express. It's probably like giving them less credit than they deserve. It's better than that. Are you gonna get a musubi? I think I'm gonna get one at some point during this trip, because I've actually never had one. These look delicious, and they're only a dollar. Oh my god. They're big. I think we definitely ordered like way too many and I was worried that they were gonna come out and we weren't gonna know which one is which, but they're actually labeled. They put a little receipt on the top of the box with what the item is and then what the symbol is. And if you call in advance, they actually will do custom like artwork on your Manapua. We should have done that. We could have got like a gizmo one. These are like extremely hot. This is gonna be like biting into like a pizza hot pocket and it like scalding the top of my mouth. Yeah, they're all like made to order, so you gotta wait like five, 10 minutes. Yeah, it was very quick. And like this whole box was only $10, or I think like $9 something. It was like super cheap. The guy, we were talking to the guy and he said the one time someone ordered a thousand of them. That's gonna be us at the end of the trip. <laughs> all right, first one I'm trying is the pizza one. So this isn't what I was expecting when I thought of pizza. I thought it was gonna be like pepperoni and like marinara sauce. But I think this just has like sausage and cheese and it has a little bit of kind of like a pizza flavor to it. Nice and a little bit crispy on the outside, but then it's so fluffy and soft on the inside. If I lived here, I'd probably come here every day and <laughs> get a different one. Next up is the honey garlic chicken as a orange X. It's so garlicky. It's interesting because it's so like crispy on the outside but so soft on the inside. I've usually had like char siu baos and it's usually just like all, I mean it's usually baked, right? So good. I know when I was looking on Yelp, a lot of people said that this was their favorite and I can see why. I feel like we're gonna have to come back here another day and get more of them. I'd do like a four and a half out of five Peters. I just took a bite of the garlic chicken one. This is good. This is so good. <laughs> Next up is the spinach mozzarella. The guy working here is actually super nice. He added this one and another one to our order because he just wanted us to try like as many as possible. Mm. It tastes like a spinach dip, just like shoved inside of a deep fried fluffy <laughs> bun. This gets a four out of five. This is so flavorful, so good. So last time we were here in Hawaii, I absolutely loved the Kalbi ribs at Helena's and they got a kalbi with one of these manapuas, so I gotta try it. I think I found a new favorite. This one's just so juicy, so good. If you like kalbi ribs, get this one. Next up, I'm gonna try the char siu because we had to at least get you know one traditional one. We just landed in Hawaii. We've been here only for a few hours, and I'm already in heaven with how freaking good the food is here. This is like, I was the most excited for the food coming back here, and this does not <laughs> disappoint freaking delicious. I really can't decide which one's my favorite. Mm. 
And in case you've never had char siu before, it's like a marinated pork. Like it. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's so freaking good. You just gotta trust me. I'm really curious about this because I am a connoisseur of Oreos. And I like deep fried Oreos, but what is a Manapua Oreo? I don't know. We're gonna find out. <laughs> it's not just like a deep fried Oreo. It's almost like they smashed it and then fried it. So it's not as crunchy as an Oreo, but it, it does taste like a deep fried Oreo. I'm in like a food coma right now, so good. One of the ones that he recommended was the Lily Koi, which he said kind of tastes like a passion fruit. I remember having Lily Koi last time we were here and really liking it. He said that they mix this with cream cheese. It is so freaking creamy. It almost reminds me of like those malasadas that we got at Leonard's Bakery the last time we were here. That's like what it reminds me of. Oh my god, I just want like a hundred of these. Yeah, I think they mixed the Oreo with cream cheese too. That's why it's tasted. Oh my god. This tastes like Hawaii in my mouth. Exploded. <laughs> you know this place gets the Ordinary Adventure Star. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Last but not least is ube. Ube is made out of taro and it tastes kind of like a sweet potato. I've never actually had it, to be honest with you. That looks so cool. It's also mixed with that cream cheese, I think. So it has a very sweet vanilla-y kind of taste to it. Highly recommend. If you come to Honolulu, get your rental car, drive 10 minutes, come to Honolulu Kitchen. It's, it's like in the strip mall. I've noticed that about Hawaii. Like all the good food places are like, just like in weird strip malls. You would never suspect that like, it's like the most amazing thing ever, but it is. And if you don't believe us, this place actually has a 4.5 rating on Yelp with over a thousand reviews. That's how Peter found it. And if you're staying at Alani, it's literally on the way to Alani. Just stop on your way, get like 50 of them, take them to your room, you'll be good. <laughs> One more stop before we get to Alani. They got Ruby Tuesdays here. Oh my God, look, there's a crumble cookie. <laughs> If you're going to stay at Alani, I have another pro tip for you. Stop at Target. It's only four miles away and like this nice shopping center. They have everything here. You're going to want to stock up on some stuff because provisions at Alani are a little expensive. You want some water or soda, stuff like that. Last time we came to Oahu, we actually came to this exact Target, but we filmed a video for Patreon and we made the mistake of waiting until like halfway through our trip to come here. So I was like, first thing, we're coming to Target to get water. So this Target's pretty much like any other Target around the country, so they do have a few like Hawaiian specific stuff here. So over in the floral area, they actually have some Lay's. Yeah. I was thinking about getting one just because I, I don't think Alani gives you one. Would that be ridiculous if I bought one for myself? I think we'll get one at the Luau. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. I won't get one here. Last time we were here, the dollar spot area was all like Hawaii touristy stuff, but instead right now, it's all Christmas stuff for the locals. And of course they have a whole aisle for sun care. We're gonna have to find a reef safe option. So this is the only one that we're seeing right now. There must be more options. If not, we're gonna get this. We found another one. This one's by Hawaiian Tropic. This is the good stuff. It smells like a pina colada. If you get a DVC room at Alani, you get a fridge, so maybe stock up on some food so you're not paying tons of money at the resort. We found the good goods. All these like chocolate covered macadamia nuts. Do you know something like 90% of macadamia nuts come from Hawaii? I mean, that makes sense. Look at how many freaking things of chocolate there are. I've never seen these before. We have some little cookies, shortbread cookies with lily koi and taro flavor. Oh my god, okay. I don't know how I'm still hungry after we just ate all that food. Candy bread. There's a bunch of candies over here too. Check this out. Lehing sour fruit salad. It's like sour gummies covered in lehing. Yeah, lehing is kind of the sour plum kind of thing. Yeah, it's like a powder. Mini gummy pineapples. I feel like we should pick up some kind of lehing thing. I, I like sour belts. Yeah, let's get these. I feel like I, I remember you didn't like Lee Hing when we, we tried it last time. I thought it was good. It was fun to try. It wasn't my favorite, but I, I'll definitely eat some of these. Honey, I found a lay for you. Perfect. It's a lay of gummy pineapples. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mainly here to grab some soda because soda's at Awani. I 
forget what the price is, something like seven or eight bucks, something insane. And you don't want to be paying that price. So put them in your mini fridge, buy them here. I gave in to temptation. How good does that sound? Honey milk macadamia? Chocolate? So Lani is in this area called Koalina, and it's like the most beautiful area. There it is. There it is. I already feel like my eyes watering with tears, and we're not even there yet. I'm totally gonna cry again, I'm sorry. I'm having an emotional day. Just so you know, parking at Alani for guests of the hotel is $37 a night currently. If you are a DVC member, you get to park for free. So what you're saying is we need to become DVC members? Worth it alone for that. It's really interesting because the last time we were here was at the end of 2020 when things were reopening and there was nobody here. Capacity was sliced into like a tenth of what it normally is. And this week that we're here, it's almost at capacity. So I'm interested to see how different it is. And also how different it is with everything open. Cause there's a lot of experiences that weren't available when we were here last time. It is crazy how much our channel has grown since the last time we were here. Last time we were here, one person, actually two people, our entire seven day trip, two people knew Ordinary Adventures. Today, we ran into like four people, just the period of us getting from the parking garage to check in. I know, it's, it's so cool. Like at the front desk, one of the guys was like, oh, I checked you in when you guys were here two years ago. That's just <laughs> so cool that he re like remembered. And Okay, not crying yet, not crying yet. Okay, let's go put the stuff in the room. We're staying at the other tower this time, which is kind of cool. Next week is my birthday, so they gave me a pin to celebrate my birthday. Some Manahune oh, out there. Oh, that's really cute. I didn't even notice that. Also, we were supposed to have a standard, like, bad view room, but we somehow got upgraded to an ocean view room by magic, so that's cool. And of course, the view is incredible. We gotta find our room now. We have found our room, 1142. Spoiler alert, I already put our stuff inside. But I didn't really get a chance to take a look. Wow. Looks very similar to our room last time, except this time I don't think we get a little mini kitchen, which is fine with me. Ohana, Sorota and Remick. If you listen closely, there's like, nature noises coming from the TV. What is this? Welcome back to Alani. So glad you're back to enjoy a full vacation of re relaxation and magic. Wishing you a happy holiday season. From Mickey Mouse! Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it from? It's from the general manager of Alani. Yeah, I'm kidding when they said we got some extra magic. What are these? Remember last time we got like cookies or something? This time it looks like it's some sort of chip. I'm gonna be eating these at like 3 a.m. <laughs> How nice of them. You might remember from last time, this lamp, Mickey with a surfboard. You can actually buy this in the shop downstairs. Is he wearing Crocs? Oh, is he? He totally is. I didn't notice How that How did I miss time. that last time? He totally is. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Let's see our view because yeah. we were originally supposed to have like a view of nothing. I mean, any view is beautiful when you're Hawaii, but I'm happy we have an ocean view. Does every room in Awani have a balcony? I think so. Wow. Oh my god. This is a beautiful view. We made it, honey. <laughs> we made it just in time for sunset, too. We're back. We're back in Awani. This resort is so beautiful. I'm surprised it took us two years to get back here. <laughs> to be honest with you, because we fell in love with this place when we were here in 2020. Yeah. Feels good to be back. And we got two big beds. We got some art on the wall right here. I remember that artwork. Yeah, I think it was different. We were in a different tower, so I think it might have been different art. Oh yeah, one is themed for like female and one is male, right? I think so. Yeah, we were on the other side last time. Continuing the room tour, we do have a bathroom. Wow, this is huge. Look at that huge tub. Tub, wow. oh, and it has a rainfall shower. I don't remember that. It probably was there. Wow. Yeah, this is nice. 
They still give you the H2O products and the individual containers here. That's a plus. And I remember the last time I came here, the flush test was pretty good. I think this is where the flush test was invented, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> was it really? I think so. It's good. That's a solid flush. Yeah, that's a five. Ordinary Adventure Star. Down here, I think might be a mini fridge. Yes. Yeah. So that's where we're gonna put our waters and our sodas. And <gasps> There's more? Holy crap. What the? Oh heck? my God, I'm so happy we opened this. You know what those crackers are for? It's because there's cheese. Holy cow. We love charcuterie boards. We used to not like them, <laughs> but now we do. <laughs> Holy crap! I was wondering what those crackers were I was for. Like, I, was that's like, very, I was like, that's very nice of them. They gave us some crackers, like, thank you. Oh my God. I can't get used to this life. We never have to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> we have dinner in, I think, an hour and 15 minutes. So we shouldn't yeah. stuff ourselves that much, but you know, for science. For science, we should at least try a little bit. I can't get over this view. Cause last time we were here, we had a garden view room, which is like on the other side of those towers, looking towards the Luau. This is, this is like paradise guys. This is incredible. Just so everybody doesn't think that you get one of these with your rooms. I think our friend Chris may have set this up cause he's such a nice guy. Thank, Thank you, you Chris. Chris. We did plan to go explore more of Alani today. But well, we got in a little bit late and we have a 5 p.m. dinner at Ama Ama, which is a restaurant that wasn't open the last time we were here. Actually, it just reopened this past month. So we're gonna experience that for the first time. I've heard it's incredible. What is that? That's not a squirrel. Hi. What are you? <laughs> what the heck was that thing? What was that? I don't know. It looks like our dog Gizmo, to be honest. We just asked a cast member and it turns out that was a mongoose. They have like quite the mongoose population here, but I guess apparently they like keep away the rodents, but he said, don't get too close. They aren't that friendly. <laughs> Here's a look at the menu. It's changed. It used to be a la carte and now it's this prefix four course meal that's kind of expensive. And they also have a plant-based four course tasting menu as well. So the sign right here tells me that Ama Ama gets its name from a very choice type of mullet fish native to Hawaii. And just so you guys know, the dress code here is resort casual. So no swimsuits, no board shorts, that sort of thing. But t-shirts, you know, are perfectly fine as long as they're not offensive. Be aware, you don't want to be this guy. Don't drink under the influence of alcohol. <laughs> drink under the influence of alcohol? Yeah, it's just okay. operating a vehicle under the influence of intoxicants. It said don't drink under the influence of oh. alcohol. I haven't had wow. any drinks yet. He's sober, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're here right after Halloween, but they still got their pumpkin up. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so beautiful. Huh? We have to keep it up for a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we booked a 5 p.m. reservation because we are hoping to catch the sunset. I think it's gonna happen. Ama Ama's only open for dinner. It's closed on Mondays. And right now they have a prefix menu. It's a four course tasting prefix menu. They used to have a la carte, no more. They also don't do lunch or breakfast anymore. But I've heard this food is good. The question is, is it worth $125 each? We'll find out. Here's a look at the signature cocktails here. It's some very, very fancy stuff. I'm wondering if we're gonna like it. They also have beer and wine as well. And they also have some mocktails as well. So for the little ones, if they wanna have something fun. This view is absolutely incredible. We're literally facing the sunset, so I can't wait for it to happen. Originally our reservation was for like 8 p.m. And then we're like, wait, it's gonna be dark then. What's the point? So we did call and come in a little bit earlier. And also, the water that they give you is from a volcano. <laughs> it's just like a, that's just the brand that it is. Yeah. But it's, it's good. It doesn't taste like ash or anything. <laughs> it's not really from a volcano. Strange thing is, this has such a wonderful view and it's wasted for two thirds of the day. There's no breakfast here, there's no lunch. And then at nighttime, you only get an hour or two before the sun sets and then it becomes just blackness up there. 
So I kind of wish they would open for lunch and breakfast because there's some prime real estate. Of course, we had to start our evening off with some cocktails. I went with the server's recommendation, and this is called the Fourth Lagoon. And she basically explained it to me. She said it's kind of like a fancy mimosa. So I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> We're at a fancy restaurant on night one. Why not? Oh, wow. That is earthy. <laughs> Has like rose water in it. You can really taste it. It tastes like I took a rose and I squeezed it and then mixed in some of the, the alcohol. This is quite a lot. Very, very fancy. I'd probably give it like a three out of five. Not my favorite, but I'm gonna enjoy it. For my drink, I decided to get the Leaves of Warmth, which has a kawaii-based rum and a bunch of other ingredients, including some pineapple juice, and as you see, a basil leaf right here. Let's try it. That is strange. It's good. It's like sweet, but also a little bit of sour. I don't even know how to describe it because it's not comparable to like any drink I've had before. But it is heavy on that pineapple flavor, so if you like pineapple drinks, I would recommend this. I'm gonna give it a four out of five Peters. Something outside of my normal palate, but I'm glad that I got it. All the drinks on the Ama Ama signature cocktail menu feel like they're more crafted cocktails than it, around the resort where you get like the normal like pina coladas and tropical drinks. It seems a little bit more like, you know, holding my pinky up while I'm drinking. <laughs> uh, this menu tonight, very, very fancy. I had our server like tell us her favorite dishes and I pretty much picked everything that she recommended. <laughs> and at It's least way for, more fancy than I was expecting yeah, it to be. At least for me, I'm eating like pretty much all seafood as for dessert. So I'm really gonna be going out of my comfort zone. Peter got a lot of stuff that you can take a little stuff that Peter would like, but also- No, I'm getting like venison. Dessert. I've never had venison before. That's true, that's true. But, uh, you're in for a surprise, or I'm in for a surprise. I have no idea what to expect. Chef has prepared a wonderful amuse bouche for the two of you. Today it's going to be a Tahitian poisson crew. It's going to be made with kona kampachi, dressed with some coconut, some lime, topped with some radish and pickled chop. Notoriously, I'm not a seafood person. I like lobster. Not really much else. Maybe fish and chips. Try anything, it's good. But I'm going to try this, so it's going to be interesting. And this is some kind of like white fish, I guess? It's an amuse bouche, Peter. Oh, I had that on Paulo and it looked nothing like this. <laughs> That's good. It's like marinated in like some kind of citrus like juices. But also has like a crunch on top of it. Barely can you taste the fishy taste. <laughs> I give it four to five Peters. I know this isn't like one of the I like that you're rating a mouge bouches now. Hey! <laughs> I thought I was gonna like we were filming this because I thought I was gonna do the like the gross face. You know, when you have something you really didn't like, I thought that was what was going to happen. I'd have to see that. It just tastes like a really fresh, like, salad. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Definitely a palate cleanser. It's beautiful. Look at that cute little... Yeah, he hubby smoked fish. My starter, I ended up getting the venison tartare. I think this means that it's not cooked. I've never had venison. I've never had not cooked venison. It looks like it comes with like a little side salad as well. I gotta admit, I'm a little freaked out by this. Oh, you don't like it? I don't like it. I think it's just a little too far outside of my comfort zone. I felt like I was gonna love it because of that fish. And I thought I was gonna hate the fish. But it's just like this like slimy texture to it. I don't know. Maybe if it was cooked here, I think I would feel better about it, but I'm not even gonna give this a rating. I, I just think this is like not for me. It's a little too fancy for me. one year anniversary of my mom passing away and I've been okay most of the day 
but we were sitting here and the band just was saying like her favorite song. And I like lost it. I feel like that's a sign, right? I don't know. Um, anyway, so excuse me, I'm probably gonna look like this for the rest of the video. But I ended up getting the smoked fish and this is totally out of my comfort zone as well. It's covered in caviar. I trusted our server. I hope. <laughs> I don't like caviar. So I don't know. We'll see. And it comes with a side of these little taro chips to, dip, to scoop it up, I guess. I'm scared. There's a lot of fish eggs on there. Oh. It's not my favorite. <laughs> but it's not bad. It's actually pretty tasty. It reminds me of like tuna or something. I don't know. Or like cat food. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably give it like a, a four out of five. Be adventurous. It's not that bad. I gotta say, we timed it perfectly. We had a five o'clock reservation. It's approaching six and the sun is setting. It looks beautiful. And I also want to say that the service here is incredible. Anytime I take a drink of water, there's a guy that like runs over and like fills up my glass. I almost feel bad. Our server noticed that I didn't like the, the venison. I was like, I'm gonna bring you over a salad. And I was like, no, 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 no. And she's like, no, it's your birthday. She told me it was her, my birthday. Service here, 10 out of 10. 10 out of five peters. <laughs> I had to try another cocktail off the menu, and this time I chose Ode to Mango. This has citrus vodka and mango with fresh lemon juice. And it is another fancy looking cocktail. I can smell it like before I even taste it. It's that potent of mango. So it starts off super mango-y, and then it slowly dissolves into like a really sour lime flavor. Like it almost tastes like sour Skittles, which I freaking love. This gets a five out of five. Not for everyone. That citrus vodka is really, really strong. Just putting that out there. But I like it. Alma um, um, used to be a family-friendly restaurant. It is now a fine dining restaurant, aiming for a higher-end clientele. Has new chefs from the old restaurant so the menu is completely changed everything is made from scratch it's like a two-hour experience because it takes them time to make all the dishes and everything because it's made from scratch they actually made it with inclusivity in mind so if you are vegan if you are gluten-free they can basically just take one or two ingredients out of every menu item I wonder with this resort having a lot of families if the kids, I know their kids have their own menu here, but I wonder if it's, it's if the fine dining thing is gonna stay. Just my thought. Like I said earlier, stepping out of my comfort zone. For my second course, I actually ended up getting octopus. It's called Hee, and this comes with like a risotto. And I asked her what octopus tastes like, because I've actually never had it before, and she said it tastes like chicken. So. We'll see. It's cut so thin, like it literally does just look like a piece of chicken. Oh wait, take it back. Is that a tentacle? <laughs> cut to 10 minutes later of me just looking for tentacles. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous to, to try this, but I'm being adventurous today. I feel like the dominant flavor here is that lemon. They really put a lot of lemon on top of this, but it's so good with that creamy, creamy, Parmesan risotto mix so well with octopus and she's right you really like it doesn't even taste like fish to me Like whatever they did here. It's cooked to perfection. I'm so happy. I tried this. I was kind of nervous But turned out to be pretty pretty tasty. This gets like a four out of five as you know I'm a connoisseur of pork belly So I had to get the pork belly and this is served alongside you'd think it would be poi because it's purple But it's Okinawa sweet potato Look at that, it looks fatty. Ooh. I gotta be honest with you, before this moment, I was a little underwhelmed by this restaurant. The views are awesome, the service is incredible, but the food is just like too fancy for us. Then hits the second course. <laughs> this pork belly is the best pork belly I've ever had. It literally wow. melts in your mouth. That sweet potato tastes unlike anything I've ever had before. It's so creamy. Five out of five, Peters. This is incredible. Just give me like 25 of those and call it a night. <laughs> it's almost seven o'clock, not two hours after this restaurant opened. You can't even see the water because the sun has completely set. Oh my God, 
I just noticed. You see it? Oh, is there a mini hoodie up there? Yeah. Of course. So there's menahune hidden all around Alani. You gotta find them, and they're always somewhere. You just gotta look up, look down. For my entree, I got the scallops. This comes with bacon, Brussels sprouts, corn. Like I've said before, I trust my scallops on Gordon Ramsay because he is the king of scallops. And if you mess up a scallop, what are you doing? I knew it was too good to be true. Then yeah, I can't say what he says because he says a lot of cuss words on his show. But basically like, scallops are really hard to perfect and these look pretty dang good. They give you three of them, three cute little scallops. It should be nice and, oh yeah. Here's what you have to do. You have to get a bite with everything on it. You gotta get the corn, you gotta get the bacon everything, dip it in the sauce, and it is phenomenal. This gets a five out of five. Gordon Ramsay would be proud. <laughs> the only sad thing is, is they only give you three. But I get it, scallops are expensive. But I wish I had more than three. For my entree, I got the Kobe ribeye. You know, I love ribeyes, I'm a connoisseur of ribeyes. I've never seen a ribeye like this, though. It's almost like cut into small little pieces. Ooh. That demi glaze was cooked over the course of a day. It takes them a day to do that. It's so flavorful. That demi glaze is just like just full of flavor. I don't know how to describe it. This ribeye is not it's like fatty. It's usually like fatty ribeye. It is a little smaller in portion size. Good. Like just everything that's comfy. The potatoes, the onions, the tomato, the mushroom. Perfectly presented. Everything tastes so well, especially when you combine it together. Five out of five people. Whoa. I feel like I started this meal off like kind of like being like, maybe this restaurant isn't for me. Maybe it's too fancy. It is too fancy for me. But the last two entrees have totally won me over. I'm loving this. It's worth $125. We'll, we'll get that. Kitch was laughing me on the drinks, but I finally ordered my second. And the one I ordered is the Night Fell on Ube. This has wood fire reserve old fashioned. A touch of Ube syrup. It has orange bitters. And it has this ice cube that's made out of Ube. So as it melts, the Ube like kind of just takes over the drink. I'm not sure if you can see this. It looks black, but it's actually purple. It's actually like a dark purple. Who thought of like making it old fashioned and adding ube to it? It sounds like two things that shouldn't go together, but like the strongness of the alcohol combined with like this. Yeah. I don't want to say sweetness. Okay, but it is a little bit sweet. It's a five out of five beers. I think I like this a lot more than the other drink I got. An ordinary adventures pro tip, let it sit for about 10 minutes so the ice cube begins to melt because otherwise you'll just be drinking like the wood fire reserve. For dessert, I got the chocolate mousse. Now this is milk chocolate macadamia nut crunch, cinnamon cream, and Kona coffee. Sounded right up my alley. And look at how freaking fancy this is. There's gold all over it. This looks like it's, he's wearing like a little pointy hat or something. It looks like a witch. <laughs> Tastes like chocolate coffee. Wow. This is decadent. This is so good. You could really taste the coffee flavor. I actually think you would like this, Peter, because I know that you like like frappuccino. Like it almost tastes like a frappuccino or something. I feel like it's too fancy to eat though. I feel bad like destroying it, you know what I mean? Gotta take off his hat. Perfect way to end our night. For my dessert, I ended up getting the citrus bar. It was highly recommended by our server. And this might be one of the best presented desserts that I've ever gotten. It looks like a work of art. First of all, it has a little chocolate that basically says happy birthday, because I'm here celebrating my birthday. It has a little hidden Mickey there. I just don't know how much time has gone into creating this. A lot. Half, yeah, half the plate 
is dusted with this like coconut. Apparently, the chef says to like take every spoonful and rub it in the coconut. But this is just delightful. It's just like the right amount of sweetness. It has like those little chips on top that make it give it a little bit of crunch. Four to five Peters. This is such a lovely restaurant. Amazing views, amazing atmosphere. The music playing in the, the distance, it's all great. And as the courses came, they got better and better and better. But, hot take. I think I actually enjoy Maki Hiki better, which is another restaurant here at Alani that we had the last time we were here. And I think that was around $70, and it was also like a prefix menu. I think I had three or four courses as well. This is good. I just, I don't know if I could recommend it for $125. I enjoyed myself. It was a, a nice experience, but I don't know if, if I'm coming back here anytime soon. You know what I mean? I really liked the meal here. The service was incredible. The views were even more amazing. And most of the courses, except for the starters, wasn't really into the starters. I think, is this worth it for you is going to depend on can you afford $125 a person for a meal? And then number two, I would highly recommend looking at the menu online before booking here because I think for some people, it's just gonna be way too fancy. It's just way more fancy than most Disney restaurants, maybe aside from Remy or Victoria and Albert's. So there you go. I would eat here again, but I do agree with you. From what I remember, the, the meal at Makahiki for almost half the price was very good so I'm not sure if I could reason myself to come here over there aside from the views and the service I guess I could reason myself <laughs> I feel like we had all these plans to go to the <laughs> go to the store check that out meet some characters but I'm like white that flight was a long flight and now I'm in like a food coma we just got to Hawaii and we've already eaten too much food. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. We got up early, so we might just call it a night. I don't know. Forgot about the elevator music. This is just the first day, so if you want to see more from our adventures to Hawaii, we'll put the playlist right over there. I want to say thank you to some of our Patreons, that includes. Kelly, Nathan, Christy, and Russ and Serenity. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.